It's a new year. Home buyers are going to be fronted with a market that has given way to lower interest rates, but also one that has a limited amount of supply of homes for sale. There will be more multiple offer situations with better and better terms for sellers. Buyers, it's a seller's world, and we're all just living in it. So let's discuss the steps of buying a house in 2024. Not only buying a house, but the steps of ensuring that you get the house that you love and that you're not having to search every weekend for six months, putting in 25 offers. Because that process sucks. It sucks for you as the buyer, but it also sucks for us agents. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, the recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that has sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions, then know I'm here to help. So you have decided that you want to buy a house. Now, the first step should be meeting with your real estate agent to discuss the home buying process as well as their credentials. You'll want to ensure that your agent is not a newly licensed agent because experience matters more than ever in a real estate market like this. During this meeting, that agent should go over the home buy process as well as the current market conditions. They're also going to talk to you about where you are looking for your next dream home and what you want in that house. Now, if you've already bought a house before, then you're probably thinking, I don't need to go over that process, and that's fine. But you'll want to go over all the characteristics on how to make your offer stronger and more attractive to a home seller. And if you're needing to sell in order to buy, well, my friend, your meeting may take a little longer as a good agent should go over your options in regards to that house sale. Can you buy without selling? Would a suitable housing clause make sense? What are the chances that we can get this done with a good old-fashioned home sale contingency? If so, then how many tens of thousands of dollars will that home sale contingency end up costing me in the end? Yeah, if you own a home, then you may need this meeting more than the first time home buyer does. Step two is working on your financing. Now, I know most people would say this is where you get pre-approved, but in this market, you need to do better. You need to get pre-committed. Now, a pre-commitment is where the bank has committed you personally for the loan. In other words, the only thing that they really need to do in order to fully underwrite your loan is for you to go under agreement on a house and the bank verify the asset through an appraisal. Now, there is some additional homework to be done here. If you're putting more than 5% down, then we really need to go over how much of an appraisal gap coverage amount you can afford to offer a seller. A lot of times, this would be the difference between winning an offer and not. I actually consider this the secret sauce to getting contracts accepted nowadays. Now, step three, that's the fun part. You'll have gone over and reviewed properties on text or emails, and now it's the time to go check out some homes. Maybe you fall in love with the first house that you see, or maybe it takes the 10th house. The important thing to remember is that this is a personal step. An agent's opinion of the actual house really doesn't matter here. It's about what's important to you, and it's checking your needs boxes and a bunch of your wants boxes as well. Now, I personally always have an exercise with my clients where I have them rank the house on a scale of 1 to 10 after each visit. This helps keep all the properties from blending together and helps us ensure that it fulfills the needs of that buyer. Now, once you've found a place that you like, then that's when we move on to step four. This is essentially when we start putting together an offer game plan. Now, a good agent will reach out to the listing agent to find out more about the home seller, like if there's a date that they need to close on, or if there's an offer deadline is a great example. Remember that ranking scale that we talked about just a moment ago? Well, this is also when that ranking scale matters again. You'll most likely be more aggressive on a house that ranked a nine and a half than a house that ranked a solid eight. This is when we want to talk about whether you want to do a home inspection. And if so, then if you would like to do one with a threshold amount, will you be offering appraisal gap language? Maybe there's a need for a rent back or a suitable housing clause. Can we and should we use an escalation clause? This is when we fine tune all of this because I have noticed more and more that most sellers are not coming back asking for a best and final. You need to put your best foot forward from the onset because we may not get a second chance. Now, step five is the agent writing up that offer and sending it over to the buyer for a review. Now, I personally take the time to send a long, detailed email that goes every, over every little nuance of the offer. I always just want to ensure that everyone knows what they're signing and what the repercussions are if they don't go through with it. It's a contract. It's a serious thing, and in my opinion, it should be handled that way. Now, step six is the presentation to the seller. 
In this case, we put together an offer package to send over to the seller. Now, I always do a nice cover letter that talks about the strengths of the offer. I'll also point out a negative and do my best to spin it. Now, a great example of this is that maybe a buyer is putting a lower amount down, but they've already been fully committed for their loan. We will let the mortgage banker know about the offer submission so that way they can actually reach out and call the listing agent and talk to them about the strengths of the offer of the buyer that we're submitting. I also take the time to point out that I'm not some new agent that's going to make newbie mistakes and that I have a team of professionals behind me to help ensure that it's a smooth and enjoyable transaction for both the listing agent as well as the sellers. Agents are not looking for an agent to make their life more difficult. Listing agents want someone they know will act professionally. This is another reason why you do not want a new inexperienced agent. Now, step seven is getting the response from the seller. Now, normally I'd have us going into the offer accepted process, but in this market, most buyers will have to jump back to step three and start the process over again. And they'll most likely have to do this three to five times. If the market goes crazy out again, then this could easily be 10 or more times. Now, I've noticed that the buyers that take the time to meet in step one and get fully committed in step two end up securing a house a lot quicker than those that don't, just as a heads up there. So the offer got accepted, and now it's time to move on to step eight. I call this the dating phase. This is really when we do the due diligence on one another. If we are doing a home inspection, then this is when it's going to be done. If you as a buyer are wanting to go downtown to pull the jacket of the property as an example, to see what permits have been pulled, then this is when you do it. If you have questions about maybe water leaking in the basement, then this is when we ask those questions. Now, step nine is working on your financing. Step eight and nine are both kind of happening at the same time. This would be the time that you may do some rate shopping and closing cost shopping. But ultimately, you will want to lock the rate and start the process within a couple days after going under agreement. Step 10 is when we sign the purchase and sale agreement. If dating is the equivalent of getting the offer signed, then the purchase and sale agreement would be the equivalent to the engagement. Now, this is when things are serious. The only contingency that remains at this point would be the financing contingency. If you have one, that is. This is also when the remainder of the deposits do, and that tends to be a lot of money, which makes me think of an engagement ring and well, why I call this the engagement. Now, step 11 is the continued work with the mortgage company to get them everything that they need. This will include documents like bank statements, W-2s, 1099s, but will also include getting a homeowner's insurance policy as a great example. But it's rather light lifting until about a week before the closing date. Now, step 12 would be calling the utility companies to get your names on the services and letting them know when the start dates are going to be. You don't want to walk into a house with no electricity. It's a real pain in the backside. Trust me. Step 13 is reviewing the financial numbers and arranging payment of the balance that's owed. Now, sometimes a buyer will wire the funds to their closing attorney, and other times they're going to get a cashier's check. That's 100% up to you, but just know the end can get a little crazy with the adjustment, so be on the lookout for that. Step 14 is the final walkthrough. You'll always want to do the walkthrough of a property before you actually sign on the dotted line. You'll want to ensure that a property, it's being delivered in the way that a seller has promised. You want to ensure that they didn't remove an appliance that was supposed to be there as a great example, or leave a bunch of junk in the attic that wasn't supposed to be there. The final walkthrough is generally done the evening before or the day of closing. Now, step 15 is the closing, and we can thank COVID for a more streamlined closing process. A lot of banks will actually have the buyer sign electronically all the disclosure documents, which really just leaves the recorded documents that are in need of a wet signature in order to be signed. Examples of these documents are like the closing disclosure and the mortgage. Now, the closing should take up about 30 minutes tops. Step 16 has nothing to do with you, but that is the time it takes to take the documents that you just signed and get them recorded with the registry of deeds. Once this is done, then the house, it's officially yours. So congratulations. And that leads us to step 17, which is, well, moving in. If you have any questions about the home buying process, then let me know. I'm here to help, whether you're looking to move in the next 9 or 90 days. All my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also reach out to me at YouTube realestateagent.com. Until next time.